Good news for potential mothers, DJ.com Bahad announced that its staff would now be eligible for six months of fully paid maternity leave. This is actually triple the norm laid out in Malaysia's labour laws, where employers are mandated to give their staff eight weeks of maternity leave. The policy of first in Malaysia has been in place since January 1st. The fairer sex make up 45% of DJ's employees and 43% of its board are women. According to CEO Alban Murthy, we are committed to continue building an organisation that better reflects the world we live in. The move comes at a time where paid parental leave is a hot topic globally, even with presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton making it a cornerstone of her campaign. A 1,000 ringgit minimum wage is reasonable, says Minister in the PM's department, Datuk Sri Abdul Wahid Omar. He said that if you take a step back and look at what is the decent level for people to be paid, I don't think RM1000 per month is unreasonable. There are some rumblings, or some would argue threats, that the number of people being retrenched in July could spike as employers batten down the hatches in this tough economic environment. Wahed's answer to that though is for businesses to either find ways to improve productivity or renew their business model. The investigation into 1MDB marches on as more pieces of the puzzle unfold. Swiss bank BSISA saw several of its senior employees resign from its Singapore office over the past couple of months, including three that had been on the vetting board when 1MDB came a knockin. However, none have been accused of any wrongdoing. PM Datuk Sri Najib was also asked the status of the usage and balance of the RM4 billion loan from pension fund Coop to 1MDB's former subsidiary SRC International and whether any of that money had been returned. Najib replied he could only disclose audited 1MDB financials to ensure accuracy and authenticity of the information. PKR Sec Gen Rafizi Ramli's arrest under the OSA has opposition lawmakers crying foul. The Pandan MP was nabbed at Parliament Gates yesterday after he exposed what he claimed to be an excerpt from the AG's classified report on 1MDB. Rafisi's colleagues aren't taking issue with the reason for his arrest, rather they say the cops had no right to arrest him while he was still on Parliament grounds. Because whatever actions that the police want to take in the Parliament compound, they are first legally required to notify the Speaker. But an AMNO minister argues the police did not break any laws. Dato Sri Azlina says the same law that protects parliamentarians does not give immunity to lawmakers who have committed a crime. Speaker Tan Sri Pandeka has promised to look into the matter. WhatsApp, the world's biggest IM platform, surprised its 1 billion users this morning with a little pop-up message that all messages in the space are now encrypted. With end-to-end -end encryption, that means your chats, secret family recipes, compromising photos, will not be accessible to anyone outside of yourself, even to WhatsApp employees. In the midst of the Apple versus FBI fight over personal security, WhatsApp move can be read as a blatant middle finger to governments which side of the battle it is picking. People are still on the fence though as to whether this move is quietly comforting or just another way for bad guys to communicate without us knowing.